I'm Robin Clevett, welcome to the channel. This is The Big Build and we're at the stage where we're doing something really enjoyable if you ask me, second fixing and in particular, skirtings and architraves. Our linings were fitted before the plastering. That gives us a super flat, flush edge. So when we glue back our architrave sets and we pin them into the lining, it's a really pucker job without a huge amount of cork on this back side here. If you just have a look at that, there's no need for a huge amount of cork, just a nice decorator's cork in there. This is MDF. We tend to use MDF skirting and architrave so much now. We used to use softwood when I was a lot younger. Softwood is fine, but it's not reliable. It shrinks. You have to generally prime it all around, seal it all in. If you don't, you put the heating on and it will shrink, everything will shrink back and you go around having to redecorate. It's also super expensive compared to a factory produced MDF. Now MDF skirting and architrave, like everything comes in different qualities and types. I'm using one which I particularly like where they mold it. The molding is still really nice and flat. It's not furred up too much. It's been primed in the factory and it's pretty much ready to go. This is by Skirting World. Skirting World are a reliable outfit. They are a company that basically processes all the orders online, delivers it very swiftly in their own trucks. And I particularly like using that product. So we're using a sort of a lamb's tongue. It's a really nice detail. The skirting and the architrave are the same. Obviously the margin is slightly different. And this is basically the setup. That's the skirting will run back into the architrave, just like standard. We've got a lot of architraves to do. We want to standardize it as much as possible. I've got an offcut here with a miter on each end. I've also rebated it to the margin. And what we do is we pop it in here and we just go around quickly doing all the frames for reference here. Now, what if you do, if you, if you make, make yourself one of these, you've got a rebate here. Just get your blade of your knife and take a little bit more of this off, okay? Just carefully, just take a little bit more of that off. And all that does, it means when you push it into the corner, you can actually get it beyond, so you can get a really nice crossover like that. So it's just an extra little tip there to make sure that you can mark exactly to where you need to be instead of stopping short. So we'll go around, put all of these margin marks on quickly now, all together everywhere. It's, um, it's quicker to do it now. Put one in the middle, just to keep it nice and true. And if you really want to, you can mark the bottom and the middle. So when you're pinning your architraves back, you've got some reference there and all these little useful gadgets will last the whole job it takes a couple of minutes to set up and once you're set up you can just race around and get it all set out exactly as you want here which is good and then just like i mentioned earlier we'll make sure that we've got all of our heads ready all of our legs ready We'll just bring them up, chop them to length by turning them upside down, make them, glue them, fix them, and it's a fairly rapid job. So the architraves are sent out in 2.4 meter lengths. What I like to do is break them back to about 2.1 meters. We whiz this out to the saw. Now the saw's outside with a dust extraction on. You can use it indoors with a dust extraction on, but some of that MDF dust will still go in the atmosphere. And so you'd need to wear a mask, obviously, but moreover, it seems to settle everywhere. So if you'd be cutting in this room, after a couple of days, you go into the next room and it'll be completely everywhere. So it's in the atmosphere. So what we're trying to do is minimize the amount of dust we create on this job. We've got a half fitted kitchen. We've got a staircase, which is ready for second fixing and the decorators are on site too. So we take it outside for what it's worth, the extra time, and we'll work out here. We're gonna get enough legs cut with left and right miters on. Sometimes what I like to do, especially with a, um, a material like this, I've got a really nice flat edge and a square side. So to save time, you can actually miter both of them at once as a pair. So you would set them onto the saw, back to back, if you like, here, like this. 
and you'd run it through, uh, let's demonstrate it, let's take it out and I'll show you what I mean. So to save time, we will do this. So we'd have them back to back, because it's nice and square and true, and we'll push them both in. We'll just measure them to the 2.1 meters that we're looking for. Okay, 2.1. The reason why I don't put a miter on the end is because they're a bit tall for us. And when we stand them up upstairs, the chances are they'll hit the ceiling. But you could just put the miters on, take them up, turn them upside down, mark them and cut them. So let's just pop that in, cut them off. And that obviously gives us a pair straight, straight off the bat. There you go, we're all ready to go. So all we need to do is have the head now. So that's just a much quicker way of doing things. You can stack them in pairs back to back, bring them to the saw. You could set a stop up. I could quite easily do it with this saw. So I just push them in, cut them off, push them in, cut them off. But there's no rush. We haven't got that much to do. It won't take us very long. And like always, let's enjoy the process and make a beautiful job of it. Here's some sets of architrave. I've cut them all long. They've got the proper left and right mitres on. I've also put a head. Now the heads are predetermined. So in the case of our pre-finished door linings or the pre-made door linings, we always have the same length architrave. And that allows for the margin around the door. The margin avoids the butt hinges and everything is absolutely perfect in that respect. Something I like to do is use the edge of the chipboard as a reference. So when I'm putting these together on site, because these are nice factory boards, they're obviously square. Basically that gives me an idea as soon as I've glued it, that it's nice and square too. So I can just use the end of one of these chipboard panels as a reference, glue it up and it's perfect. Now we just want to glue them and fix them. Before we do that, we're just going to shorten them. So what that means is I've got an off cut of architrave here. I'm putting it on the margin there. I'm going to put a very faint pencil mark above it. That's my overall length. I'm going to take the leg which is fitting on this side. I'm going to carefully point the point on the floor here. All right, note the word carefully because you don't want to dent the end. And then we can just basically transfer the length onto the architrave. And then we'll just trim that down. And we know locally that's exactly where it needs to be. Let's do the other side as well. Let's do this side. So we put it on our margin line. A little faint pencil mark. Take our leg. Put the point of the leg on the floor. Gently, being the operative word. Mark exactly where we want to trim it. So here. And we've cut both of those off. Now you could take it down to your chop saw or you could do all of the sets, get them all ready, take them all down to the chop saw and chop them. But there's carpet going here so you can afford a handsaw cut for them. It will be no problem at all. And you can also, if you really wanted to, cut them both at the same time. Now this is an existing floor. So the floor isn't perfectly true. If it was, like most of our new builds, we could pretty much cut all of our legs to length with the mitres on, especially where there's a carpet, because the carpet is at least 18 millimeters thick by the time you have an underlay. So therefore, you can make them all an average, which would be absolutely perfect, put them all up together. And indeed, we do do that quite a lot. This example works really well. For example, where you've got a finished floor like that, because you want your architraves to be hard against the finished floor, a nice crisp cut, and that's the one you might want to afford to do on your chop saw, because you know it's going to be nice and crisp. You haven't got to really mark it um, too much with a saw, for example. So we'll cut these in. Just cut them off. Right now I've got a pouch full of stuff. I'm just setting up. So when you get set up to do something, you end up with all your tools on your belt, because then 
and then you find a place for them. So all we're going to do is just quickly cut this off. My sharp saw. Now, just when we're doing architraves, there's several ways of going about this. Sometimes, when we fix our skirting to our architraves, we run a biscuit, okay, in the end of here. So at that point now, I would get my biscuit jointer and I'd run a groove so it's already in the architrave. I actually think that's not a bad idea, regardless of whether you use the biscuits or not, to have it out put your groove in so it's there, because sometimes with an MDF, you want it to finish as flat and as flush as possible. It's unlike softwood, where you can take a sander to it and sand it all down. You're basically gonna sand through the hard face of the MDF, and sometimes it takes more decorating because you end up creating a furry point where you paint it and you have gotta keep rubbing that back. It's really nice when it's flat and flush like this. Sometimes it ends up set back, sometimes it ends up sitting proud, but really and truly, it wants to be on the same plane. And by popping a biscuit in there, even the smallest size biscuit, you can basically make sure it all sits nice and flat and flush. So I think we'll just get the biscuit around, we'll pop it in a very small router, and I think we'll do those so we've got them done as well. So I've got a small quarter inch router, battery router, palm router if you like, and I've got a small biscuit in, fairly inexpensive cutter, but what it will give me is a groove. If I always work off the face side every time, that's the best thing. So I know that I want to have a biscuit within the square section. So here, within there. So my biscuit wants to be within that. What I don't want to do is run the biscuit too high that the cutter might come out the top of the molding on the architrave. So using my router that I'm going to use as a reference, I know that I've got to basically cut just in this last section. You'll find that some router cutters aren't very good for extracting the dust. Now what I'm saying is you can fit different attachments on to these routers. For example, there's a section that goes in there. But what's happening here is because our router has got nothing else around it, all the dust is gonna pretty much go in the atmosphere. Only a very little bit would come out of there. So if, if I, when I set myself up in a minute a little bit better, I'll probably get my timber stools up here, clamp these on in one go, ready, ready to rock. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And I'll just quickly route all of these out in one go. What I'm gonna try is doing it with the hoover on here by one hand. And that gives me something for a biscuit, okay? So I do that now because if you do them after they're done, you can't really do them that easy. I can glue them all together now. So we'll get this one out of the way. That's cut, ready to be stuck. I'll put this one on this side down here. And that's ready to go. Do the same on the other side. Got to cut it to length first. Here we go, move them out of the way. Already squared across, a matter of just cutting to length now. As you come through the back, if you cut all the way through there, this bit's gonna be weak. So you wanna to get to a point where you bring the saw around now and cut that face bit out of the way here. You can hear it's almost about to drop off. Back to there, and just tease it off. There about there. And you've got a nice, you've got a nice cut and you're not damaged that bit or that bit there. Simple stuff. Now, quick, a quick biscuit on that side there. So 
we'll glue the set together. Now what, what we normally do is, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, is I'd have myself set up, I'd have all my cuts ready to go, do all the gluing in one go, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna glue this one and get it polymered back to the opening and pinned in as well. So we take ourselves some mitre glue and some activator. I say, look at me, I'm not set up very well. It's not like me, I'm normally really anal about how we're set up. But when you put a camera in front of you, you end up doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm just gonna use these, these two board ends to get me somewhere near where I want to be. So we activate first. There we go. And then we use the glue on the opposite side. This is a brilliant product. This is the sort of thing that I can remember using for the first time thinking this is magic. It's actual magic, carpentry magic. We'll line that back up there. Keep it with the board. You've got a little bit of time. It's not until the glue and the activator meet when everything starts getting a little bit frantic. And it's also best to do it on a flat surface like this. And that's it. You're basically going to hold that for a few seconds. You can see I'm nice and true with the board join there as well. So I know that when it goes up against the door, it's going to be good. And that's it. We're nice and free. Same for the other side. I'm going to activate the one that's on the floor here. Let's put the straw on. Always handy that. I'll give that a little spray. And get some adhesive on here. You want to make sure you've got enough cover because of the strength of the joint all is basically down to the glue. And then we want to get that glued. Get it somewhere near it. And then you're going to just pull it together perfectly there. Hold it nice and flat. Just let that go off. A few seconds is plenty. And that's it. Now, at this point, I might go around and get another few stuck, so it's got a little bit of time to go off. But for the purpose of this video, we will get it fixed up on the wall, which enables, which means that what we're going to do is we've obviously cut it into how we want it to fit. That's ready to go. It's like a picture frame now. And with MDF, I just prefer doing this. With software years ago, we'd put individual pieces up and we'd even pin the mitres. When you try and pin through the side of MDF, it pushes apart. So we tend not to do that. I mean, some people do do that, but we tend not to do that if we can help it. So we're gonna use a glue and adhesive, a contact type gripper adhesive. This is one which is supplied by Skirting World. It's a polymer. And what we wanna do is, I put it on the wall and the lining, as opposed to the back of the architrave, purely in case I put the architrave up with it on and I accidentally lay it against the wall in the wrong space. So glue all up the wall there, you've got to clean it off. Decorator's going to not like you very much. So what I like to do is pop a line of glue over where the join between the architrave and the lining is, so it's kind of caught it. So I would basically just go just here with a little bit of adhesive. It just gives us a nice little contact between the two substrates, the wood and the plaster. You don't want to go too mad because it's got to push back against this. You just want to have a bit of adhesive there. And I, I like it particularly because it grabs your architrave. That's what you want. That's absolutely perfect there. Then it's just a matter of taking our pre-mitered and glued frame, standing in between it, carefully lifting it up. Don't jolt it around too much because it We'll just come apart probably. And then we'll stand it in because we've already marked it. We've cut each leg to suit the sides. We'll whack it against, we'll give it a tap. You could bring in a rubber hammer if you wanted, a rubber mallet. And then we're just gonna use the architrave to set the margins all the way around. In this case, I'm working really closely to an angle bead. So although it wants to be dead parallel here, if someone's built this and it's all a bit wonky, you may have to look at that and think, where does it need to look perfect? Now I'm happy with everything here because we built the stud work. We also make sure the plasterers who we use are pretty good at getting everything plumb, like angle beads. And that's what I like about the adhesive because it's on and it's held. 
and I can actually just literally pull it in and out to where I want it there and that adhesive is grabbed it and it's holding it. Okay, so you want to be parallel obviously to your lining everywhere, which is the name of the game. You also want to be straight from top to bottom. If you're really anal, you could put a straight edge against there, but providing your linings are nice and plumb and true, just keep it parallel and pin them in. You can see where the biscuit is jointed on already for our skirting to go into them. That will keep everything nice and flat and flush. Look at that lovely little piece. Nice little mitre to go on there to get us around the corner. This is an 18 gauge pin. It's only a short. It's around about 30, sort of 35 mil. And all we're going to do is we're going to pin it into the softwood lining that we've got here. Okay, so we'll make the margin the same and we're just going to pop it through there and we're going to pin it into the lining. This particular architrave is absolutely perfect because it's got a lovely flat face here that will take the pin, minimal decorating needed, and this 18 gauge is now my go-to gauge for second fixing, really. Even the skirting, I like to use this because we have a long enough fixing to go through the architraves or the skirtings through the plasterboard and penetrate into the stud beyond. So then we want to go in the head. Here. Here. And then repeat our process, keeping it nice and true and parallel, all the way down, and this way as well. And you can see that we've got a lovely joint between the frame or the lining, and also with the wall is nice as well. So that's basically how we do a set of architraves. We're gonna go around and get a few more of those on to enable us to put the skirting in this room. Okay, Ed. You go and copy what I did on that one, on that yeah. frame over there, okay? So, you remember what to do. What do you say? It's easy for you, because you can actually see up in the air there. It's actually pretty good, isn't it? Looks coming out. Yeah, I'll say. And if there's anything I need to tell you while we're going, I will. But look how tall you are, look. No, they're just short doors, aren't they? That's, yeah, what it, cool. that's what it must be. All right. Now, think about which side's which. Is it? Let's have a little bring you up nice and close. Look, that's it. Look, I'm struggling to hold the camera as high as you. And pop that out of the way.
just going on the edge of the line. Yeah, just you can run. You know, you know the architrave covers nearly all of that um, packing there, so you yeah. can go even over onto the plaster. You can touch a little bit of both. I mean, you, it's yeah. So I mean, you could do yourself a line. Top you know line that you've got all that covers. Cross. You can just just go over like this. Just go over like that. And link it all together. I mean, the name of the game is to have enough air that grabs it. Because the pins will always do the work as well. It just uh, so it grabs it basically. Yeah, you could do that. Go just on the plaster and just put a tiny tight line on the wood, for example, if you wanted to. You know, just a tiny tight one, almost flat. It's just so it grips it basically. Mm. Station. It's got a really good open time. So therefore, what, what I mean is it hasn't skinned. So this piece that's over here hasn't skinned. It's still nice and tacky. Whereas if you used a solvent-based one, by the time you get to the other end of the frame, the chances are this will have skinned, which is fine. You just push everything against it, rub it a little bit, pull it off so it sort of springs apart and then push it back. So that's how you deal with that if it does skin. If you just push it against the skin, sometimes it just doesn't suck in to the material, especially if it's an MDF. So this polymer type adhesive is a much nicer option because you can end up with it grabbing as you need it. So this is the bit you have to be careful with. You just carefully ease it up, that's it. You gotta be just careful, careful, careful. And you're just gonna ease it, put the feet in first against the deck, that's it. And then you can just basically push it back gently, keep your eye on the bottom here to make sure you're out to where you want to be and then put the top back where you want it to be. And then there you go, start, start lining him up now. And that looks pretty good. I mean, look at that. I mean, the beauty of this is you can push it up against it. You've got time, the adhesive's really helping you. It's not going to fall off your mitres are perfect, they're nice and attached, they're joined, they're not gonna crack, the paint's not gonna crack in the future. And it will even help you if you've got an uneven plaster to lining, which is sometimes the case. And once you're happy with it, and you've got your margins exactly as you want them, you'll, pin, you'll pin it at the top sort of sides, if you like, uh, coming down about 75 millimeters from the end. I'm just going straight into the lining there and there, as Ed's doing there. And then what you might want to do in this instance, is again, is look at the margin. We've got a lovely margin against the wall there. All it is is a cork joint there. We did liberally set up our lining so we could get a full architrave in there with um, as, li as little trimming as possible. So that's it. Ed's all he's got to do now is go around with the gun and push it back against the plaster flat and hold, hold it against the plaster flat while he puts the pin into the lining. That's lovely. And I'd say that's a perfect job. So that's the basics of fixing up architrave. A really nice job to do. I particularly enjoy it. It's one of those jobs that finishes it immediately, straight away, as soon as you've done it. The whole room starts to look something. You can see that's lovely moulding here. And when you link it up with the skirting board, it looks even better as well. So are you happy with that, Ed? Yeah. Good, perfect, so brilliant.